Hey, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech, and uh, this is part two of the potassium series. Today we're going to talk about potassium in your system. So potassium uh, is a really, really important element to our plants. We already know this. The plants uh, use potassium for a lot of different things. It's used in protein synthesis. Uh, but, you know, probably the most important thing in plants is it's used to regulate uh, the osmotic potential of cells. So what that means is, uh, you know, plants are made of mostly water. They use water because it's a really, really cheap thing to build with, right? Um, so instead of, you know, fixing carbon instead of building, you know, sugars and complex carbohydrates, uh, they can just basically build a balloon and then fill that balloon with water. And it gives them kind of the, their body and it allows them to grow and reproduce really quickly um, and efficiently. So potassium is one of the main things the plant uses to maintain the osmotic potential or uh, to keep water uh, pressurized kind of in the plant cells. And uh, most importantly, it, it's uh, what the plant uses to open and close uh, the stomata or the stomates. And these are the, uh, the little openings in the plant leaves that allows the plant to let gas in and let gas out of the plant leaves. So um, it does this by pumping potassium using special little pumps. It pumps them into and out of cells. And what that does is if they punch a, uh, pump a bunch of potassium into a cell, it allows all of the water in the surrounding area to kind of flow into that cell and fill it up and make it nice and uh, rigid. Okay, um, so the plant basically uses potassium uh, for some of its most important processes and also to grow and reproduce. So uh, in addition to that, it's, kind of, it's a signaling molecule. So in the same way that our brains are, are firing um, you know, little electrons and using these little signaling molecules to communicate with other parts of our bodies, uh, these plants are, are doing very similar things with potassium. It, it allows it, the plant to communicate with itself in a lot of ways. And so for that reason, potassium is really important for fending off pests and disease problems. So if you have low potassium in your system, oftentimes you'll see plants starting to become susceptible to diseases and having a hard time fending off pest infestation. So if you've got a major pest infestation, one of the first questions you should be asking, in addition to the, you know, is my, are my nitrates too high, is, the question of, is my potassium too low? Potassium competes in the solution with calcium and magnesium. I've already mentioned this. Um, and what that means is, if there's a lot of calcium in the solution, the plant just has a much more difficult time taking up potassium. So this isn't, uh, you know, it's not a big deal in, say, traditional hydroponic systems where you're putting a lot of potassium into the system. Um, and you're controlling the amount of calcium in the system. But in aquaponic systems, oftentimes, we don't know how much calcium is in our system. And if there's going to be more of one than the other, it's almost always going to be calcium. Now, this is kind of a rare deal. Uh, you're not gonna end up with systems with, you know, 200 parts per million calcium or whatever uh, too often, but it does happen. So it's something to uh, consider if you start to see potassium deficiencies, you should go back and you should probably do a little test and find out how much calcium you have. Because sometimes uh, calcium is to blame for potassium deficiencies. This is one reason why I recommend people don't use calcium carbonates. Um, or if they are supplementing calcium in the form of a hydroxide or as a carbonate, that they're balancing that um, kind of according to uh, plant deficiency symptoms and plant uh, growth in their system. They're keeping an eye on things. And they're balancing the amount of potassium going in uh, in relation to the amount of calcium that's going into their system. So we have a lot of potassium already kind of available in our fish feed. And that, that calcium or potassium is coming into the system in the form of our feed and it's going through all of the same mineralization processes, okay? So we've got our microbes mineralizing, okay? Um, all of our organic compounds, all right? So they're breaking them down, they're oxidizing these compounds. In some instances, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's, there's just all of these microbial processes going on. And through this process, we end up with basically free potassium kind of floating around our system. So this potassium ion is just kind of cruising around the system. And uh, when it comes in contact kind of with the plant root, um, you know, 
uh, it's absorbed then into the plant. It's, it's actively absorbed. And uh, the plant then takes that uh, potassium ion and it moves it up and it uses it for growth and reproduction. So um, again, you know, our, our problem in almost all aquaponic systems uh, when there is a potassium issue is that we just don't have enough okay, potassium in our solution. So the next question is how do we recognize potassium deficiencies and how do we correct potassium deficiencies? This is Nate Story with Bright Agritech. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you watch the next video, which I'm going to talk about recognizing deficiencies. And uh, make sure you watch our last video in this series, which is going to be correcting and developing a plan for managing potassium in your system. It's so important, absolutely the, one of the most important you, uh, nutrients that you can pay attention to. So please tune in and make sure you're checking out the Vertical Food Blog because this is a detailed subject. And I'm going to go into a lot more detail on, my, on the food blog, uh, Vertical Food Blog kind of discussing um, how we manage potassium and uh, how to make your system as healthy and productive as possible.